Hey guys, it's Jocelyn. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be doing like a big sister type video. I've never done one of those, but in terms of Lewis and Clark College and making your college decision and knowing the vibe coming in to Lewis and Clark College because I feel like that is kind of difficult. I asked a while back on my Instagram for other students to give me their advice that they wish they would have gotten as incoming freshmen. So I'm gonna go through these and throw in some of mine. And as always, follow me on Instagram. You can ask me any questions there. Um, a lot of you guys do, which I really appreciate. And feel free to leave any comments too. We can have a discussion in the comments about Lewis and Clark College. You guys can get to know each other. So anyway, I'm gonna get right into it and answer your questions. So first piece of advice is, um, she says, it's a very welcoming and accepting environment, but can also be very classist at times. And just to expand on that a little bit, everyone at Lewis and Clark is pretty much willing to be friends with anyone, regardless of your background, but it's definitely easy to see the split. I think that can be really hard to acknowledge and then move past, but it's it's one of those things that like it's present everywhere it's just at a small school like Lewis and Clark it's really visible um, especially with how expensive the school is it's really easy to tell like who pays full tuition which I think there's a statistic if I can find it I'll put it on the screen but a very small percentage of students actually pay full tuition like including myself I get a lot of financial aid from the school not from like FAFSA but don't let it discourage you from reaching out because everyone is pretty open-minded they just might be coming from a very different background than you my housemate actually housemate I guess says the weird gap between athletes and non-athletes why can't we all be friends so this is something that like literally everyone will say there's this weird divide between athletes and non-athletes and it's not something that's like intentional because like I said everyone's willing to be friends with everyone else but I think it's because athletes are like the first ones to get to campus and they start training with upperclassmen right away so they like have their group and then once you have a group because this happens with NSTs as well which is the new student trip once you have your initial group it's really comforting and you don't really want to leave it so I think that's how people get stuck in the athlete zone and then they don't really branch out. And then it's really easy as a non-athlete to be like, oh, they're athletes, like they don't really want to be friends with me. But that's not really the case. Especially if you're an athlete, to make the effort, not that it should all fall on you, but to make the effort to branch out into the non-athlete realm because we all come together at parties, so. <laughs> Next, <laughs> you do an NST. I didn't and everyone already had friends when we got to school. I don't know how NSTs are going to be shifting in the next year or so. Um, if they're doing them this fall, that would be awesome, but I don't know if that's for sure. Yes, NSTs are literally the best way to start college. I have the video of my NST on my channel and I can link it below. NSTs get you, they give you like a week of buffer of like moving out and starting to make new friends but not having school out, like on top of that and it's also just like really nice to have people that you already kind of know for the first basically month of school yeah you're gonna meet people in your orientation group and everything but you're not always gonna click with those people and on an nst there's enough people and enough like weird experiences that you bond with people over certain things you have a lot of time to just talk to people Whereas for your orientation group, it's like you're just kind of thrown together and you have to do these things and it's like icebreakers and like, ugh. but yeah, so NSTs, I, I literally can't recommend them enough. It was the best thing I ever decided to do for college. Like seriously. Another person says, don't limit your friend group right away. This kind of goes hand in hand with NSTs and um, athlete groups. It's really easy, like I said, to just get comfortable with a group and just kind of call it and be like, okay, these are my friends forever. But like, if I'm being honest with you guys, my friend group has changed every single year. Like the people I'm, I was friends with from my NST, they weren't my best friends for the entire year. And also, I'm not tight with all but one of them at this point. And I'm a junior now, if you guys don't know. It's like, yeah, I still know them and I still hang out with a lot of them, but 
they were my best friends at the beginning of freshman year and they are no longer my best friends but that's not a bad thing that's just like growth um and then last year like the, the people i was tight with last year i'm not so close with now um and i can only imagine that it's going to happen again it's not a bad thing to have your friend groups change um and it's also not a bad thing to realize that you became friends out of convenience and that they're not actually your people that's totally okay next <laughs> my friend says the ski club is a joke and that lc admin don't care if you live or die that's quite dramatic <laughs> but the ski club truly is nothing um so if you're excited about that don't be but you will find people to go to mount hood with you know what i mean like it's it's just the ski club itself isn't great um as for what he says about lc admin it's not that they don't care it's just that there's there's been like a disconnect recently um where students are really pushing for certain things that we view as really important and as the student body that should be really important to administration um but we're having some miscommunications we're working with it and hopefully this won't be a problem for much longer but i can't guarantee that um so i guess keep in mind that just because it's a small school does not mean that the student body has all the control that we want to have over where efforts go, if that makes sense. This is like a topic, separate topic, I guess. Um, but this is regarding the environmental studies major, which we call ENVS. I have some information from a girl I know that is majoring and she says, as an ENVS major, I feel like people tend to want to find the negative, so they complain. Um, it's definitely different than what I thought, but you can find that out by doing research online. So I guess I'll just like give you an overview. There's like, I think four people in the ENVS department. I think that is a common issue. Like I know there's one professor, which I'm sure you can find on Write My Professor. I don't, I haven't had him, so I won't speak on this, but I know that people have issues with him just not liking his style and if there's only four people in the department you're going to have to take a lot of classes with that person so I think that's the common problem is like if you don't like a professor you can't really get away from them whereas in bigger departments you can so that's something to be aware of and I've heard for the minor because a lot of people are like Ooh, like I really like this but I also love the environment so I'm gonna tack on the minor I think that maybe that's not the best idea I'm an English major and an ENVS minor, and Jocelyn asked me to talk about the ENVS minor a little bit. Um, so, so far I've enjoyed my time in the ENVS realm. The cool thing about the minor is that you don't have to take ENVS specific courses. Like I've taken um, SOAN classes and history classes that count towards the minor requirements. So it really allows you to broaden your horizons or focus your horizons depending on what you're interested in. Um, and they really encourage you to, especially the beginning, pick something that like really strikes you and kind of go off of that specific topic throughout the rest of your classes so that you can really dive into something that really interests you instead of trying to learn everything about everything right away. Um, the one thing that isn't my favorite about the minor is actually the professor, so I guess that would be the major too. Um, some of them, are, they're sweet and they're well-meaning um but not my favorite professors i've had those are all the recommendations i got from instagram but i'm just going to talk to you guys a little bit about my like big sister tips so one thing i'm going to say and this is going to come across maybe a little bit like what but a lot of people coming in their freshman year have a hoe phase <laughs> that is okay but let me tell you how small our school is if you hook up with somebody, you are going to see them maybe every day for the next four years. You know what I mean? Like it's literally, it's a small school. So be careful who you hook up with. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying, be aware. Going off of that, dating people on campus. Uh, I know like relationships, you can't really predict anything, but try to end things in a very cordial way <laughs> if you're ending things because again you will see these people and for some reason it's not like I would say LC is a super like gossipy campus but it's just so small that like if I 
date somebody and I say something about him to my friend, they're probably going to talk about it because they know somebody else that's involved and then it just goes and goes and goes and then everyone seems to know your business and it's like, that's not a bad thing necessarily, but it's like, people will know. And I will also say, I know of a lot of groups from say NSTs or just like early on freshman groups because they tend to be really big and a lot of people will do like intergroup hooking up which is really messy and then like say you and your friend both hook up with the same guy or like you hook up with this guy and then like the next year your friend you're no longer in the same friend group but your friend hooks up with him and you're like ah you really like it's one of those things where your ego kind of has to take a back seat because it's just like kind of a given that you and a lot of other people are going to be hooking up with the same people and you probably have a class with them and you probably will eat with them and you probably like it's just kind of inevitable so be careful when you're making these decisions to hook up with people that's all I'm saying well, freshman year can be really kind of crazy and overwhelming and you're like adjusting to so many things and trying to manage so many different parts of your life but I would seriously recommend joining clubs so obviously that means go to the Pio Fair the Pio Fair is awesome it's so much fun sign up for so many clubs like so many and then start to filter out like when you get all their emails and stuff be like okay I'm not actually interested in this I want to do this one piece of advice that my cousin gave me when I was like way younger is that when she went to college she decided to say yes to everything and I mean that in a safe way obviously don't say yes to literally everything but like if someone asks you to join their intramural like kickball team do it because even if you suck like it'll be so much fun and you'll be able to say like you tried it and like maybe you won't do it next year but like it was fun so I don't know I just think like it's really important to get outside of your comfort zone especially because in college like coming into college you can kind of reinvent yourself if you want to which I would say be careful with that because obviously like stay true to yourself Ooh, use study groups okay sometimes it can be hard to like make friends with people in your classes especially if it's like a class that's not your major but you're like interested in it so you don't really know anyone in the class start a study group and you can even like when the professor sends emails you can use like the class um like list serve or whatever email them and be like hey you guys would you want to study in the library together for this exam and nine times out of ten like at least half the class will show up so our bookstore at lewis and clark has every book that is required for a class right but i would recommend looking on either thrift books abe books or like amazon for a used copy or a cheaper version a lot of times you can find that and it's really good for the environment to get a used version of a book um, especially because you're probably not going to keep it afterwards but yeah definitely check online before you go to the bookstore when in doubt like the bookstore is gonna have it you can also use the Facebook page and be like hey does anyone have a book from this class that they don't want and sometimes people will just give them to you so that's a good thing to check too so the advice I just got from my friend says it's perfectly okay to eat by yourself at the bone and not feel insecure about that it took me a long time to be able to go into the bone in the morning before class and just like eat some oatmeal by myself um, I will say it feels a lot more comfortable to eat by yourself if you're at one of the tall tables the tall little round ones and seriously use the career center I've actually only been in there a couple times but every time I went in it was so helpful and it's like you don't actually have to go in knowing what you need help with you can just be like hey I think I want to get a job and I don't really know what to do and someone's gonna help you it's like so convenient so nice if you talk to your professor and make an effort to create a relationship with them that can be really helpful also just like having people to network with um, like I've asked so many professors in the biology department that are like basically my advisory team I've been like hey do you guys know anything for like research options this summer like do you know anything 
and then they can send you like people they've worked with and like things that aren't going to be listed online that's like a super smart way to network and if you start early like you're gonna have bffs by the time you graduate i was talking to my professor who's like my really close friend um and she was like I get so tired of having to be in a good mood all the time. If you're like rude in class one day, everyone's like, oh, she's so horrible. Like, I can't believe she was so rude today. And it's like, sorry, sometimes a professor is having a bad day. And it's like, we're all human. We have range of emotion. Try to be understanding and they'll try to be understanding as well. Um, getting a job on campus is really smart. Even if you don't have work study, it's totally possible. Wouldn't recommend getting the jobs where they pay you by like Amazon gift card it just feels like a waste like obviously they need people to do the work but unless you're desperate find something else I feel like I've talked about this before but go to office hours like you need it some professors office hours suck and that's okay but you won't know until you go and sometimes they'll basically tell you what's gonna be on the exam and then you're like oh shoot now I can be so prepared and it's okay to miss your family it's okay to feel like out of place um, this is a huge life shift and just because you feel maybe out of place or homesick does not mean that you don't belong at Lewis and Clark but it also like I'm not gonna tell you that everyone does because sometimes even with all the information I'm trying to give you guys to make sure that you don't make that mistake of choosing the wrong college it might happen and that's okay but like being homesick is totally normal like dude it's totally normal to be like oh my god what is going on it's also totally normal if you've never lived in the pacific northwest like i haven't um to develop seasonal depression like it's something that at some point you don't even realize that it's happening and then the sun comes out for one day and you're like holy smokes i just had like an entire turnaround of my entire life right now the troom they have super yummy pizza they have burgers they have um fries and soups and sandwiches and it's like okay if you've been to Disneyland and you know the like rocket cafe place if you know what I'm talking about that's what it's like pizza port it's called pizza port it's the vibes of pizza port in the trail room aka pizza port you pick up your entree and then you get to pick one side and one dessert and one drink I think that's what makes up a meal and then that counts as a meal swipe I think you have to tell them to like meal swipe or whatever like when you're checking out there's like a rule of what counts as a meal swipe so for Maggie's I didn't learn this for literally so long at Maggie's you can also do a meal swipe there's a weird time period though which I don't know what it'll be next year but they have sandwiches and they rotate weekly and they usually have two or three sandwiches there's only ever one vegetarian sandwich and sometimes it's not even vegan but the ciabatta that they make their sandwiches on is literally so good and at Maggie's you can meal swipe with a sandwich a bag of chips and a drink um, and there's specifications on the type of drink the like sparkling water and like soda counts like you can't get like a kombucha as your drink for your meal swipe in terms of sharing the bathrooms it don't feel awkward yes you're going to be pooping next to somebody sorry that's just the way of life and let me tell you most of the boys I've lived with they put in earbuds when they're pooping so they can't even hear you anyway um so that's just my very blunt advice about the bathroom I mean no one really cares <laughs> and showering if you have someone creepy in your bathroom that you don't feel comfortable showering with you should uh, tell your RA um, because you don't need to live with that and you should feel safe and comfortable in your bathroom. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope this is really helpful and if there's anything I didn't explain or that you just want to hear more about my experience with, let me know. You can leave it in the comments or like I said, follow me on Instagram and DM me there. I always get back to you guys. Subscribe if you want to. Um, give this video a like if you guys want more videos like this and I hope to see you guys next fall. I'll be gone in the spring and then I'll be graduated, but I'll keep making these videos as long as you guys want them. Sending you my love and I'll see you guys later.